what's up everyone welcome back to my channel in today's video i'm going to be showing you guys how i created these really pretty colorful mixed ombre butterfly outline nails that i hand painted with a little bit of bling so this is going to be an acrylic set right now i'm going in with my primer i did dehydrate with some isopropyl alcohol i'm just using the savalan primer so i'm going to be using a lot of colors in this video because i wanted to do a really colorful set i seen this one set on pinterest i'm not sure who the nail artist is because it didn't say but i got a little bit of inspiration um, from them it was like a really colorful ombre set with some butterfly outlines but i did mine like a little bit different just to change it up so i'm going to be using a lot of colors from acrylics today um, these colors do take a few beads to build up the color. I noticed that after working with them like a lot lately, um, they're not like as pigmented as I thought they were. Like they seem to be mixed with a lot of clear. So in order to get the look that I got, you have to go over the color a couple times with um, like a few beads to build up the color. Um, otherwise it kind of like shears out, but it is kind of cool that you can wear them either way. Um, I don't mind like building up the color but yeah I noticed that lately while working with them so the purple shade is called iris and the blue shade is called sky as you can see I had to go over the blue shade with like three beads and I was picking up pretty decent sized beads it's just that they don't have a lot of pigment in them for some reason I don't know if that's like on purpose or whatever um, but yeah the next color I'm using from them is key lime glow this is actually a glow in the dark acrylic but I'm not really using it for the glow in the dark purpose I just really like the color um, so yeah this is kind of like a very light um, like minty green color I really like this color all of these colors are really pretty for spring like once I build them up um, I might be going in with like um, a couple more beads over the colors later on since I'm doing an ombre that's what you kind of have to do to like blend the colors. sometimes you have to like add some in and go back and forth um so this color that I'm using this pink shade is from model one it's a shade number 13 and this color is more pigmented than the acrylics one so I kind of ran into the issue where it was like a little bit hard to blend them because they're like two different consistencies so that's what I mean where you have to kind of go in and add like a little bit more of the green or the pink just to get that like perfect blend if it makes any sense and I prefer to work with my acrylics wetter while I'm doing ombres because I do feel like they blend a lot better and, and it also helps keep the layers thin while you're working because you always have to encapsulate your ombres so that you don't fall through the blend and also to build up your nails so as you can see I'm adding a little bit more blue to this nail just to bring it up some more at first i was thinking of doing a triple ombre on this nail but i decided to just do the purple and the blue so that's what i'm gonna do usually to get the blend um, i usually start with a bead like halfway on the nail bed and blend it down into the tip color and then go in with another one up by the cuticle area and blend it over that into the tip color um, and then I do kind of like add a bead in the middle and blend it up and down to like really get that nice blend. If the colors aren't blending that great like they are with these. Um, so yeah, I do like kind of do that. Like I said, you kind of got to work with it with ombre. Sometimes certain colors just don't blend that well. So you kind of have to make them blend if that makes any sense. So as you can see, I'm taking a small bead of this purple and blending it up and then down into the blue and that's where you get that really nice fade um, just try not to use too much acrylic um, because it can tend to bulk up the nails that's the thing so just be careful with that because like i said you do have to encapsulate your blends so on this nail i'm going to be doing a triple ombre so i have the color iris at the tip from acrylics and i'm also going in with sky in the middle and these two colors blend pretty well. Um, I will be adding a little bit more purple to the tip because it kind of like ended up disappearing. And then for the top color on this ombre, I'm using the color Vanessa from Glam and Glitz. I had this color for like ever. I don't think I've ever really used it or if I did, it was a really long time ago. But as you can see, this color, well, first of all, that bead was a little bit wet. I'm not gonna lie. 
but this color is a lot more pigmented than the acrylics colors so it was like yeah kind of like overpowering the colors so off camera i did go in and add a little bit more blue and purple kind of blended it up and down and eventually it came together but that was a really hard one because um, they are two different consistencies like the glam and glitz one is really like pigmented whereas the acrylics ones seem to be like i said before mixed with more so clear than pigment so like i said it's a little bit difficult to blend but anyways on this nail i'm going to be using iris which is a purple color at the tip and then that same pink from model ones these weren't too bad to blend Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and encapsulate the nails with Mia Secret Clear Acrylic. I'm not going to lie, at this point in the video, my brush was getting a little bit gunked up from the glam and glitz and the model ones acrylic um so it was kind of like giving me a little bit of issues applying my acrylic and brushing it out because it was like a little bit sticky from those acrylics are a little bit sticky for some reason um but yeah i managed to make it work but just so you know um i ran out of like acetone so i actually have to go pick it up so yeah the struggle is real but we always make it work on this channel, like I say every time. It's nothing a little filing can't fix in the end, so I'm not really that worried about it. So as you can see, I'm doing my usual three bead method today. Um, and then I kind of just look at my nails and then add an acrylic where I need to. But you always want to encapsulate your ombres no matter what, um, so that you don't file through the blend. Um, like I was mentioning earlier and you also use the clear to build up the structure of your nails because you're supposed to apply your layers thin when you um, do your ombres so the clear kind of also helps to build up the rest of the structure of your nails so I usually start by building up the free edge of the nail um, so I apply my first bead there and I focus it in that area the next bead is halfway um, onto the nail bed area where i start building the apex and then the third bead is also um, the bead that i use to build the apex and then um, i just look at the nail and add an acrylic where i need to but i do work with each bead till it pretty much sets um, and you do want to turn your hand to the side to see if you need to like brush out the acrylic to um, like brush out any bumps or anything in your acrylic um, as you can see, I'm adding a little bit more hair because there's like a dip in the nail. Um, but yeah, I work with my beads until they pretty much set to avoid like having the acrylic spread off to the sides and widen the nail. That's why you always see me like patting the sides of the nail with my brush and the tip to help keep the shape of the nail while I'm working.
And now I'm gonna move on to the filing. I'm gonna start by debulking my nails per usual. So I'm using the Melody Suzy MR5 nail drill and my Melody Suzy pink dust collector. Um, so I usually start by debulking. These nails came out a little on the thick side. So yeah, I'm taking them down quite a bit because my brush was like all sticky and stuff and it was hard to like place the acrylic where I wanted to. It wasn't too bad, but yeah, they were a little bit bulkier than I liked. So I'm just kind of like going around the cuticle first to get that down really low and seal it. And then like taking off quite a bit of the bulk um, over the surface of the nail just by like going side to side down the nail with my drill um, and like filing underneath the nail and everything like that. And eventually the shape comes back through and they look really nice. Um, and I also kind of like um, use my drill to file along the sides a little bit to kind of redefine the shape before I go in with my hand file um, But yeah, the structure of your nail should always have a little hill for your apex as you can see when I turn my hand to the side um, You could see the little hill for your apex and then um, They get thinner towards the free edge, but you have some thickness there. So um, The nail has some strength so they don't like break um, and then when you look down the barrel of your nail, the sidewalls should be very thin on the sides. And then when you um, flip your nail over and file underneath, you want to sometimes, I mean, this is optional, but I, I like to um, do this because it gives a tiny bit of a curve at the tip. I like to file like right under the tip of the nail and it gives it like a tiny bit of a curve. These are flat nail tips, so they don't have a C curve. Um, I really don't like a deep C curve, but I do like just that little curve at the tip, if you know what I mean. It just makes them look a lot neater. But yeah, I'm not like into the deep C curves because I feel like they make your hands look bulky in a way. Next, I'm going to take my hand file to shape up the nails. So I'm doing a tapered square for this set. So to start, I take the bulk off of the sides first of the nail. 
um, and I file a few times on each side until I get like my desired overall width that I want my nails to be. So I hold my files straight to do that. Um, and like I said, alternate sides so that, you know, your shape doesn't come out uneven. Um, and then to get that tapered square look, like to taper the tip in, you hold your file at an angle and then file in towards the tip and you just keep filing in um, until you're satisfied like with how tapered they are. If you want like really tapered, you would just keep filing inward. Um, and then to file the free edge, hold your file at an angle and file straight across or you can hold the file at an angle but file up and down, whatever works. Um, and then you can also use a hand file to file over the surface of the nail if you want to further perfect your shape, which I do that sometimes. Um, because like sometimes, you know, when I'm using the drill, I don't get all the spots and I just want to like perfect it a little bit more. So I do that with my hand file. Um, but I love doing the shaping last because the shape just looks way more crisp when you do it that way instead of shaping them first and then going in with the drill. It kind of like almost rounds out the edges in a way, doing it that way in my opinion. Um, so that's why I like to do it this way. And then I do buff the nails to buff out the scratches and smooth them out. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and apply some rhinestones off to the sides of my nail because I'm gonna start doing the butterfly outlines. So I'm gonna be using the rhinestones as like the body of the butterfly. So I just used a little bit of McCart rhinestone gel and some little AB rhinestones um, and just put them off to the side because I'm gonna be drawing the wings like half of the butterfly is on the nail if that makes sense you just want to make sure to get the excess gel off of your nail before you go ahead and cure these nails with the butterflies are going to be matte too so you want to make sure you don't have any residual gel because it will show when you go to paint the matte so i'm going to be using this really pretty purple shade from nail reserve la it's called fashionista forever it's a really nice purple shade and i feel like it complemented the set so I'm going to be doing butterfly outlines and then like applying glitter over them. So the thing with this is you have to draw the whole thing um, without curing um, because you have to apply the glitter, which was a challenge for me because usually I like do little parts and cure here and there. So it was giving me a little bit of anxiety. I'm not going to lie, but I wanted to do it. So I like the way they turned out. Actually, um, they turned out really pretty. So um, I just did like all different kinds of butterflies on every nail. Um, so what I do is I start by like kind of doing um, a light outline of how I want the wings and then I go back in and thicken up the lines and I applied a little too much gel here so I'm wiping it away. Um, so as you can see I did a little bit of veining there too. Um, and like you kind of want to do the little flick at the top of each wing because that's what's really going to give it that butterfly wing effect. And I had to turn my nail this way to the side to like really get um, that nice flick on the bottom half of the wing. I don't know, I'm weird like that. It's hard when you're doing your own nails. I just do weird things sometimes, but yeah, don't mind me. But yeah, you wanna do like that little flick at the bottom and also do like some veining at the bottom wings. So now that the butterfly is done, I'm gonna go ahead and grab 
some like plain craft glitter and just dump it right over there you want to kind of rotate your nail to make sure that every part of the butterfly wing gets covered with the glitter and it kind of gives like this sugared effect to the nail which is really pretty and it really gives that spring vibe like the butterflies just took the set to the next level like the ombre was cute and everything but like the butterflies just like completed it and then the bling and everything i really love the way these came out and i was nervous that my butterflies were going to come out really ugly and look like cartoonish but like they actually look really good like i'm surprised because they were looking a little bit ugly to me when i was like drawing the outline i was like ooh, i don't know how that's gonna look when i put the glitter on it but yeah they did actually turn out really cute like it's gonna seem a little bit weird like when you're just doing the outline um and not like adding details that's why i was kind of like wondering how it was gonna look but then when you add the glitter like everything comes together it just like makes it pop for some reason um so yeah i'm just gonna go ahead and draw another little butterfly on this side it's gonna be a little bit different than the other one but still like the same process okay so now to finish up i'm just gonna go ahead and add bling to the nails basically so i'm adding this little dangly um butterfly charm i used some clear poly gel to put this on because i tried it with the mccart rhinestone gel and it was like sliding all over the place driving me insane so i said let me just use some poly gel so i don't have to worry about that so i applied that first and then um, i'm also going to be using a little bit of mccart rhinestone gel and some um, no wipe top from nail reserve la um, to apply some ab rhinestones into the gel um, after that i will be top coating the butterfly nails with the madam glam um, velvet matte top coat and just placing a couple rhinestones um, into the gel on those nails um, around the border of the butterflies just to add like something to those nails i think they turned out so cute i love the color combination i feel like it's everything um, i hope you guys like these leave me a comment and let me know what you think if you're new to the channel don't forget to subscribe before you leave um, because i do post videos every week so you don't want to miss out make sure you hit the bell so you do get notified when i actually do post the video because sometimes people don't get notified for some reason and don't forget to follow me on instagram and tiktok i'll see you guys in my next video bye love you guys
Tony. Thank you. We need. Ringy. Ringy. 